In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Welcome to this virtual celebration of the Eucharist, broadcasted from St. Serum Methodist Church for, our, for all our parishioners and friends in our parish and around the world. On this third Sunday of Easter, we are invited to meet the risen Christ with the other two disciples going to Emmaus. May we open our hearts and minds to see him alive and to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Eucharist. Let us call to mind our sins. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. In the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you are staying in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You are Israelites. Hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as yourselves know, this man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you, about the patriarch David, that he died and was buried, and his tomb in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witness. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke his Father, him who judges impartiality, according to one's each, each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal contract, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was at, with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. 
Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The great theme in today's readings is that we need God and the Mass gives us what we need. The Gospel today from St. Luke tells us, while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Immediately, the despair of the two disciples turned to joy. Their despondency turned to elation, and they rushed back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples of their encounter with the risen Lord. It is likely we can identify with these two disciples who were on the road to Emmaus. We have all experienced times of despair and disappointment. We've had dreams dashed and felt overwhelming losses. Perhaps these times have weakened our faith or left us questioning God's plan for us. Just like the two we hear about today, we need something to bring us out of our gloom at times. We need our outlook lifted and our faith reignited. We need God. This is what brings us here. We need God, and the Mass gives us what we need. It is not unlike our own road to Emmaus. We entered the doors needing to be fed. In the Liturgy of the Word, God speaks to us. The Scriptures feed us, teaching us God's ways and His plan for us. We are nourished again in the Liturgy of the Eucharist, Today's gospel tells us he made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is repeated at every Mass. It is the perfect sacrifice, the perfect meal, the perfect nourishment for our souls. If we open ourselves to all that it offers, we too can feel the complete joy that energized Christ's disciples to rush out and share the good news with others. Finally, in conclusion, I'd just like to state that as this Corona-19 virus spreads around and surrounds us and inflicts so much pain and hardship on us, I want you to all know that God is with us, just like he was with those two disciples on the road to Emmaus. God is with us. God is with you. And God loves you, and I want to express my personal wish to you, along with our pastor, Father Valdi, and Deacon Neal, and all the staff, that we miss you greatly during this time when we cannot be together. And my hope is that soon we will be able to come together again as the community of St. Cyril and Methodius, and we may even be able to hug each other in gratitude for all God has given us. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Grateful for God's goodness in our lives, let us offer to him our prayerful petitions. For Pope Francis and all clergy, may God bless them with continued health, vitality, and wisdom in, wisdom in their ministries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For local and world leaders, may God guide them in making decisions for the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. For those who face economic uncertainty because of the pandemic, may God graciously look upon their needs and bring them relief and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially those who have passed away due to the Corona-19 virus, and for those who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of all the Masses this weekend, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those who are infected with the virus, and for those who could not be with us today, and especially for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, look upon us, get your name, and give us what we humbly ask of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm humbled and I'm grateful for your generosity toward our church, especially during this time of crisis. Please continue to support our church with your donation. God bless. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord God accept this sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light arise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our, is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs>
are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Rheumatodius, the patrons of our parish, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the King. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us off each other's sign of God's peace. Peace to you.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain their flesh, the incorruptible glory of the resurrection, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us to celebrate this Eucharist as a parish community. I look forward to have you in this beautiful church again. Meanwhile, let's support one another to get through this together. And have a wonderful week ahead. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth to the Mass and Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.